All right, so uh, I'm going to start off with a little timeline. Um, last year, or two years ago, I was at Tech. Uh, my first semester went very well. In my second semester, um, I was having a tough time. Um, basic things like reading and socializing were becoming very difficult, and I wasn't sure why. Um, when I got home, I was really a wreck. Um, and then a month later, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. So a few weeks later, um, they weren't sure what type of tumor was present. So a few weeks later, they did what's called a stereotactic biopsy surgery. And that served to acquire a sample of the tumor to learn which type of treatment regimen to do. Unfortunately, that was an unsuccessful surgery. They didn't, it wasn't conclusive. And it left me with something called a right-sided hemiparesis, which is a weakening of the right side of her one side of the body. So um, I had to, I couldn't really walk or talk for a little while, so I had to spend a lot of time rehabilitating um, so I could do those um, basic things again. So I was, uh, like I said, I was at the National Rehabilitation Hospital for a few weeks. And soon after, basically the next day after I left there, I started uh, chemotherapy, which serves to shrink the size of the tumor. Uh, basically, I'm not sure if y'all know this, but chemo, how it works is it attacks the fastest growing cells in your body, so that's why you lose your hair, because your hair cells grow quickly, I guess. Um, so I did four rounds of that, which took around is three days in the hospital for treatment, and then uh, three weeks at home. Um, so I did four rounds of that, which took three months. And then I went up to Philadelphia for something called proton beam radiation. Um, so regular radiation, which has been in, in use for like half a century probably, um, what it does is, is it will go through the brain to the tumor site and continue and damage, damage a lot of the surrounding brain structures. But the proton beam will stop at the tumor site so it will damage less of the surrounding structures. And that machine was worth about $100 million, so I felt pretty special. Um, so that lasted for about six weeks each day, and that is not painful at all. Chemo and radiation are not painful at all, um, so I was happy about that. Um, so soon after, I, I was in okay shape at that point, um, like mentally and physically. So um, I enrolled at George Mason University near my home. And it was a lot different than here. I, I was living at home, um, and um, I was taking a few classes, but I really hadn't recovered yet, and I was having a lot of difficulties with my cognition, so that was not going well. Um, but it started to improve. Um, um, I started to improve, and then in June, I went to a uh, camp called, for brain tumor survivors called the Heads Up Camp, Heads Up Conference in Montana. That was really enjoyable. I went to a conference called I'm Cured Now What? And then I came back to Virginia Tech. So, throughout all this, I had some difficult times. Um, one of the things with radiation, a lot of the side effects don't present right away. They present a little ways down the road, like months or years. And so those are called early building effects. I had severe problems with my cognition. Um, OCD and tics and depression were um, pretty significant. I'm glad I can laugh about that now. <laughs> um, so at times I was able to do things, but a lot of the time I really wasn't because my energy level was so low. Um, it was, I'd never experienced that before, and it was kind of discouraging that I really couldn't do a lot. Um, and I learned that an idle mind is not a good thing. I, I had too much free time, and I wasn't able to use it well for the most part. Optimistic. There were some things that helped. Um, friend and community support and visits, that was pretty significant. Um, I have a really strong community at home, and uh, a lot of my friends would come to visit me, and people would bring over dinner for a couple months. Um, that was really nice. How about the family? Uh, my brothers and my parents were really supportive. Um, the, I, don't, I don't think Pamela was here, but she organized a, a run last year for the Tech, and that was really nice. Um, and they raised some money. I also uh, did some exercise, did a few five k's myself. Got into poetry, which I'll talk about more. And then um, 
I participated in certain brain tumor support groups, which were um, like gatherings of like a dozen survivors. And that kind of thing. So um, I never really got into poetry before, but um, I had a lot of ideas that I or feelings that I had, I wanted to express, but I couldn't really figure out how. So this was a really good creative outlet for me. I was writing about my own experiences. Metaphorically, uh, it was really rewarding, and I presented it to my family and friends. And I want to show oh, I can get a piece of work. I want to show you all the poem. This is a blog that I created. Um, and I wanted to show you guys one of my poem, my first poem that I wrote. Is that okay? from his previous meal, but perhaps I'm sure what's next. Uh, regardless, a new beginning awaits, so a heady proceeds, enthusiastically embarking on a new endeavor. Like a child gazing up at a clear, dark night sky for the first time, amazed and awed, but not sure, but not sure about what to do with it all. Slowly, though, the fox had sent for miles with an exciting vision, trying to break through unsuccessful looks recognizable, but not sure where to go. Priorities reversed, new goals created, different path than imagined. Distance from self, trying to reconnect and get back on track. Like a car separated from its caravan, telling whether to try to rejoin. Getting back onto a different highway, focusing on moving forward. The highway is pretty empty, but the map says this direction is correct, so on. Um, confidence slightly you're building, a bit more at ease, caravan in sight. But tentativeness holds car back, questioning whether caravan is right. Going forward reservedly, realizing old paths is a good road to return to. But not blindly. Um, instead of looking ahead, got about other examples of my instinct. Not sure about destination, but paths not ignored and eagerly moving forward. So um, I think Chelsea, I think that it's like open to the public, right? So mm -hmm. if you if you Google me and uh, hit like Google Michael Dude Blogger, you can see more that I think. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't quote me. <laughs> um, so, next, uh, for better or worse. One of the questions that I've been wrestling with is whether this all was a good experience or a bad experience as a whole, on the whole. Um, and so, after going to that camp in Montana with a lot of people that were severely mentally and physically disabled, I would have come away with the impression that. This is a really bad thing, what was me? But then, I also remembered that one of my friends who had a similar experience a few years back told me that I, I would actually be glad that this all happened. So, I was intrigued, I made a pro and con list of the past year. And there are more pros and cons, including things like being at home, love from friends and community, meeting new people, and um, developing new life perspectives. But there are also significant cons, um, like the co toll of my cognition, um, the fears of lasting brain and kidney deficits, physical toll, and being behind with the studies. And in finally, I have still not determined whether, I'm, whether this was all a good thing or not. All right, so what I learned, um, one of the um, topics that we talked about a lot in my brain tumor support groups was finding a new normal. And what this means, um, what, can anyone guess what this means? New normal. New relative standards. Yeah. Um, basically, the idea is you're not supposed to, or I wasn't supposed to compare myself to my old standards and things I used to be able to do. I kind of had to be okay with new standards. And 
and that was not easy to do. Um, but it taught me to plan realistically because there were some things I couldn't really do anymore. Um, or I can't do anymore. Um, also, I had a few goals in mind, like going back to school, and this required me to be really patient because there was a lot of time when I was basically just sitting and waiting and wondering if I'd be able to go back and had to be really patient throughout all this. Um, it's important, I figured, or obviously this is important, but um, to know who cares about you and value those relationships. Um, when you have an experience that could take your life, you kind of get the sense of like, I shouldn't take this for granted. And, um, but I should really value the relationships I have with my family and those friends and people. Obviously, or not obviously, but positivity was really helpful and being accepting of and nice to yourself. One of the things my mom always encouraged me encourages me to be nice to myself. Um, and that's something that I have, haven't had time to do. So, moving forward, um, one of my goals toward all this was to get out of the cancer world and back into mainstream society. Um, also, to find a new path because um, I was on a different path now, or I am on a different path now. And this includes things like studying psychology, which is a change for me. Um, this summer, I'm hoping to be at Children's Hospital, Pennsylvania, and I'll be learning about that soon. And basically, at, at the hospital there, I'm hope, hoping to use my own experience to offer advice and give doctors and other useful survivors perspective. Okay, so enough about me for now. Um, I want to talk a little about YAC or young adult cancer in general. Um, there's 72,000 new diagnoses annually in the USA. That's one every eight minutes, and seven times more than pediatric cancer diagnoses. Diagnoses, and I care about the kids, but they get a lot more attention than we do, and it's not, I don't think it's fair. <laughs> um, it's a, we're often glanced over, and not not enough research or devoted to us. Um, there are the young adult cancer brain tumor support groups, but there needs to be more. So you may be wondering um, how this all relates. To um, through this presentation, hopefully you're getting a better understanding of what patients go through. Um, and one of the things that, um, one of my goals for this presentation was to break down barriers because, um, I'll get into this in a bit, but a lot of the survivors don't like talk, don't feel comfortable talking about these kinds of issues, but I do. I welcome these types of questions, but I guess people have been really sensitive, and that's a good thing, but I haven't gotten many questions. And, uh, to be frank, I, I want to talk about it, so that's why I did this presentation, so um, I welcome questions. Also, you can offer support. Um, you can also get a better understanding of the medical field and understanding its cancer experience. and. Um, Some of the mental health issues that I experience that others experience are some of the same issues that people from mainstream society can experience, like anxiety and depression. So um, those are important to know as well. So like I was saying a few moments ago, um, disclosing and asking questions is a really tough touch topic because some patients do not feel comfortable disclosing and talking about their experiences, but others do. Um, most people disclose to the close ones. But um, in terms of asking questions, um, <laughs> it's hard to say, like I, like I was saying earlier, I, I haven't gotten that many questions um, since I've been back, and that's okay. I, I can't decide whether that's um, hypersensitivity or personal anxieties, or I don't think it's apathy, but that's always an option. Um, but um, personally, I want questions, like I was saying. It's, it's really helpful for me to discuss and 